Hi, my name's Trevor. I'm the author of Le Morna Engine, a light 3D game engine featuring a software renderer which you just saw running. Today I'd like to talk about the engine's entity component system. Let's start with some definitions. An entity, anything that exists in the game world, uh, either visible or invisible. For example, a player, tree, trigger box, patrol waypoint. A sound is not an entity, but a sound source could be. A component, Discrete property of an entity that describes its presence in the game world. For example, position, velocity, color. Components can be of varying granularity. A camera component could contain various subcomponents, such as matrices and vectors describing the camera orientation, or a component could be a single element like speed. An entity can be thought of as the sum of its components. And lastly, in our definitions, system. Uh, processes that operate on an entity's uh, components. Uh, for example, rendering, collision, sound. They typically read in component data, perform a transform on it, and write the result back. So an entity component system is a conceptual model that defines relationships between entities, components, and systems. Computer games are at their core about interactions between entities. These uh, interactions can be irregular and complex. For example, this lever opens a door 50 meters away, which lets out a cat that in 30 seconds will turn into a flying carpet the player can ride. Developing a system that can properly handle such complexity is an open problem. An entity component system is one of many approaches. It makes components first-class citizens stored in a flat database-like structure and entities just an implicit and mutable collection of components. Game systems know nothing about what entities they are operating on, only their components. So here is the header file for my component system. You can see from these enumerated component ID names the type of things we create as components. Animation, collide, trigger. And here are the component structures themselves. You can see some just contain an integer, others have a number of members. The granularity of the components really depends on needs and circumstance, but as a general rule, a component should have a small and directed number of members. Each component is given an ID and its size recorded for memory allocation. The Morna Engine's entity component system is loosely based on the one employed by the Unity game engine. In a classic ECS, game entities are fully dissociated into components distributed across a database. My approach and Unity's take a step back from this and groups entities with the same components together in order to be able to do indexed iteration on components. In line with the Unity approach, these groups are called archetypes and represent what would conventionally be an object type like a monster or a weapon. <clears throat> Here is the archetype structure. Archetypes have a bit mask identifying what components they contain, an entity count, uh, and the component arrays, which in this case are pointers to memory that will be allocated at setup. Within the archetype, entities exist implicitly as an index into the component array. Each has a component bit mask, allowing us to toggle components on and off at runtime using a simple bit operation. Entities cannot be assigned additional components at runtime beyond what they are initialized with, but their existing components can be disabled and enabled. So for example, the collide component can be disabled to exclude an entity from collision checks temporarily. Here is the code for creating an archetype. This particular archetype is for the ammo pickups. I submit a list of components that will define uh, the archetype and this routine uh, allocates memory for them from the memory chunk. Uh, it also forms a archetype mask from the submitted components. Uh, so then we can uh, populate our component data here and write in the component bit masks. The archetype data is mostly hard coded at this stage, but something I'd like to do in the future is pull this data in from a spreadsheet. Notice the archetypes are unnamed. We make no direct reference to archetypes out in the game systems. They are simply a convenient way of grouping like entities to improve memory access patterns. So now let's look at how a game system interacts with the entity component system. 
Uh, here's a simple function out in the source file containing code that handles monster behavior. It looks at the monster's health and triggers the die behavior if it has fallen below zero. We start by populating this uh, component fetch structure with the components we want to work with, in this case health and behavior. We call this preliminary function populate fetch table. This function forms a bit mask of the components we have submitted and steps through the archetype bit masks looking for a match. For archetypes that contain the components we are after, we grab byte pointers to the start of the component arrays. Back in the calling function, we step through uh, uh, each matched archetype, cast uh, component pointers to the head of each component array, remembering that they come in as byte pointers, and now we can iterate over the data by entity index. The component bit mask used to match archetypes is also checked against each entity's component mask. So archetypes containing system components are discovered, but individual entities with one or more of those components toggled off will be ignored. So there is some overhead in operating an entity component system. In my version, system functions are run cold each time, that is with no prior knowledge of which archetypes contain which components. So the pre-process that I've just described uh, is run each time the function is called. However, what we lose with this added complexity, we gain by making functions wholly entity agnostic. Adding a new component to an archetype adds all its functionality without having to touch any system code. Decide that you want an entity to fly, drop in the fly component, and providing you've done your work right, the entity will fly. Uh, an entity component system takes time to implement and balance, but when set up, it can be very powerful. It forces you to be rigorous in defining the boundaries of system functionality and component scope. My approach has undergone a few iterations, but it's still in some flux. I'm finding myself having to create components as simple identifiers as an aid to game systems, which seems to indicate that further re refinement is needed. Uh, so an entity component system is in truth an overkill in a game engine as simple as mine. However, it was a good learning experience writing it. Well, that concludes our look at the entity component system. Be sure to check out my code reviews of other engine systems, visit my website and follow me on Twitter. Thanks for watching.